And question four, part A then, we're asked to express this in partial fractions. So I'm assuming that you're fairly familiar with partial fractions, but if not, just go onto my website and you will find a tutorial on partial fractions. Okay, so what we've got to do is just let's say let this fraction be identical then to the partial fractions that we're going to write on the right here. What partial fractions would they be? Well, it's determined by the type of factor that you have in the denominator here. This is a linear factor, and so is this a linear factor. So that gives rise to a constant over this linear factor, x minus 1, plus another constant, call it b, say, over the next linear factor, 2x minus 3. Now, what I do is always multiply by whatever's in the denominator here to both sides. So, in other words, multiplying this fraction then by x minus 1 times 2x minus 3 would mean that it would get cancelled out completely and leave me with just the numerator 2x minus 1. This would be identical to, now I've got to take this term and multiply it again by x minus 1, 2x minus 3, and that would mean that the x minus 1 would cancel out with that x minus 1 and just leave me with a times 2x minus 3. Doing the same now on this term, that is multiplying this term by the denominator here, means that the 2x minus 3 would get cancelled out with the 2x minus 3 there and just leave me with b times x minus 1. OK, so we've got that far. All we need to do now is find the values of the constants a and b. And what I do now is then just try and make, say, this bracket equal to 0 by letting x equal 1. So let x equal 1. And we have over here 2 times 1 is 2. Take away 1 is going to be 1. And that's going to equal, it's an equation now, so we have an equal sign. And if we let x equal 1 then, on this side we have 2 times 1 is 2. Take away 3 is minus 1. Minus 1 times a leaves me with minus a. And that means that a is equal to negative 1. Okay. We now want to find out what b is, and we can do that by making this bracket go to 0, and that would mean that x would have to be 3 over 2, 1 and a half. So I'm going to say let x equal 1 and a half, or 3 over 2. And if we do that, then 1 and a half times 2 is going to be 3. 3 take away 1 is 2, so we have 2 equals... This bracket then goes to 0, so 0 times a is nothing. Over here we have 3 over 2, or 1 and a half take away 1, which is a half. Half times b is just a half b, or b over 2. Multiplying both sides by 2 gives 4 equals b, or b equals 4. OK, we now need to wind this part up just by writing this then as partial fraction. So therefore we've got 2x minus 1 over x minus 1 multiplied by 2x minus 3 and that is identical to okay a over x minus 1. Now a is a negative value and I don't really like starting off with a negative there so just go to this term which is b, b is 4 plus 4, so I might as well write 4 over 2x minus 3. It's going to look a lot better. 4 over 2x minus 3. Then we have the a, which is negative 1, so I can write minus there, and then we've got 1 over okay, x minus 1. Okay, so if you can kind of think ahead when you're doing partial fractions, so that you don't end up having negatives at the front here, uh, as the first term, I think you'll find that that's a lot better. Okay, well that brings us then to the end of 4 part A.